Okay, we're going to talk about eight on a hand. Eight on a hand is a real basic hand exercise that we, uh, pretty much every drummer should probably be playing, at least starting out. And then there's, of course, variations on it. But the whole purpose of it is to teach the drummer to play consistent notes. We want every note to look, sound, and feel the same. So I'm going to play the exercise. It's just eight notes on one hand, eight notes on the other hand, and then I'll talk about some points that I feel like are pretty important. So here's the eight on a hand exercise kind of slow. So um, let's talk about your grip first. There are lots of different variations on grip. Here's what's important to me. Um, if you're playing match grip, and if you're even playing traditional grip, your right hand will do this. Um, there is, first of all, a kind of like a pivot point or a fulcrum point that is ideal on a drumstick. Now, if you hold a drumstick in the middle, it doesn't want to go anywhere. It doesn't want to do anything. So that's not going to be too ideal for us. If you hold a drumstick at the very end, it's very top heavy, it doesn't want to bounce, but somewhere in between, around this area, and every stick's going to slightly vary, there's a really nice pivot point where you got a lot of weight on front, that's going to give you weight to go down, and but it's not so much weight to prevent it from coming back up, which is what you want. And that's good, that's a good way to hold the stick. Alright, so you just find that pivot point. Now the way that you hold it, again, there are variations on this, but here's how I like to teach people, is you're going to use your thumb and your first finger wrapped around the stick. And a way to do that is maybe to put the stick up against your thumb, like that, and then take your finger and wrap it around the stick and try to keep this closed. Go ahead and leave those fingers out for a moment. This is going to be your main grip. If you lose this grip, you will drop your stick 99.99% .99 of the time. Happens all the time. If you drop your stick, it's because you don't have a good grip. Okay? Now, your back fingers, what we're going to do with them is we're simply going to just cradle the stick. If you look at my hand, you see the stick has some movement in it. But I'm not allowing it to flop around like this would create. Okay? So, that's what I'm doing. I'm not squeezing back here right now. I'm squeezing here. This is my grip. But I'm just being very loose here. And what I'm doing is I'm letting my wrist come back with the motion of the stick. If I don't allow my wrist to move, the stick stays down. Take note of that because that's important for some things later on. Okay? So, um, when you play eight notes with this hand, I talked earlier about having things look, sound, and feel the same. Let's talk about that. Um, let's talk about look. You know, stick heights refer to how high you're playing off the drum, and I'm not really going to get into that right now, but what you want to do is make sure that you're playing the same way, that it looks the same, that your, your, um, your motion of the stick is the same, the path of the stick is the same. And by the way, the most efficient way to play is straight up and down. If you play at an angle, it requires extra effort to bring it back over here. So try not to do that, but if you play straight up and down, it pops right back up where you started, and that's good. So you're going to play straight up and down. Um, so you want it to look the same. Try to play the same height. Try to make sure you're moving your wrists exactly the same, that you're using your fingers exactly the same. We want everything to look the same. Now, look is one thing, but does it feel the same? Every, every time you play, are you using the same muscles in your hand? And if you sit there and analyze it forever, you'll notice that you can use different muscles in your hand and in your fingers and in your wrist and in your arm to make the same thing happen with the stick. But it can affect other things like how much energy you're using or uh, the sound quality of the stick. And it might even look a little different, but, it, but hitting the drum is ultimately what ends up happening. So um, what I like to advocate is that you use your wrist. We're not really using our fingers right now. We're having a good grip here in the front of your hand. Okay? So, that's feel. 
Um, and then the other issue is um, sound. Now you can play what we call playing on top of the head, where you're just letting things bounce off the top of the head. Now on this video it may be hard to hear the difference, but another way to play is through the drum. You're playing more of with the down motion. I'm playing with a little bit more velocity in my stroke. It's a little faster, so it changes the sound quality a little bit. Um, I'm not going to get into what is the best sound quality because that's not what I'm trying to tackle right now. What I'm trying to tackle is whatever you're doing, it should be very intentional. You should look, sound, and feel the same. Make it intentional because if you get in the habit of doing that now, later on, when you want things to be different on purpose, you can control that. So what we're focused on now is making sure everything looks, sounds, and feels the same. We want consistent strokes. So I've only been talking about the right hand right now for match grip. Um, so let's say you're playing with uh, two hands, okay? In this exercise, you're playing eight notes with one hand, eight notes with the other hand. You want everything to look, sound, and feel the same with the right hand, and guess what? You want everything to look, sound, and feel the same with the left hand. But not only that, you want both hands to sound the same. There's other issues beyond your control that might affect the sound, um, but for the most part we want everything to look, sound, and feel the same, and that's your goal playing this exercise. One hand versus the other hand, try to get them to be the same. Ideally, you know, if somebody wasn't watching you, they shouldn't be able to tell when you're switching hands. Now, some other issues that might be being, uh, behind your control is maybe the tension on the head isn't completely even. So when you hit one part of the drum or another part of the drum, it might be slightly different pitches. Something else that might be an issue is your two sticks might actually have a different pitch to them. Um, again, I don't really want to get into that kind of stuff right now. I really just want to focus on your hands. So um, that is your goal. Have everything look and sound and feel the same, okay? Now let's talk about traditional grip for you traditional grip players. Um, there are variations on how to hold traditional grip. I'm just gonna give you a very general one. Um, but your concepts are gonna be very similar to your right hand, okay? So in your right hand you have, you know, the, the middle of the stick and the end of the stick that you can hold it at, and then somewhere in the middle between those two points, there's going to be a really nice pivot point for you where you have enough weight on the front where the stick wants to go down, but not so much that it uh, resists the rebound, okay? You want it to rebound. Rebound's a good thing. So in your left hand, uh, your grip is going to be actually between your thumb and your first finger here, but it's not even really your first finger. It's more kind of like the, the webbing here of your hand, okay? And then the next thing you're going to do is bend this finger, and you can bend your pinky with it if you'd like because that looks kind of silly. And this is going to rest on your first knuckle between your nail and your knuckle. Okay? And then you're going to take these two fingers and wrap them around the stick. But check this out. Your grip is here. Because sometimes you're going to be loose with these fingers. Sometimes you're going to be tight with those fingers. It just depends what you're playing. So this is your cradle. Remember when we talked about cradling the stick with these fingers in this hand? Well, in this hand, your cradle is right here. Okay? So I could play just like this. And play pretty much fine, but the stick's flopping around a little bit, so I'm using these fingers to give me some extra support. So, um, in your left hand, some people will play like really, really spread out. And that's going to be an e uh, inefficient way to play. You're spreading your energy around. You don't have a very centered pivot point. And that's not a good thing. You want a very solid pivot point because it's like in the right hand, it's like as if you were to spread all of this stuff around your right hand and not have a very good pivot point. Then you're clubbing the stick into the drum like a caveman. All right. And, uh, you know, we're not cavemen anymore, so we don't need to do that. Um, and in your left hand, what you want to do is try to create as much of a ball as possible. So instead of being spread out like this, bring everything in, make it nice and tight. Um, I'm not going to get into little details of fine technique with your traditional grip right now. I'm just showing you a general one. 
And then when you play, try to analyze how you move your left hand so that your left stick is going straight up and down. Okay? And like I said, we're not going to tackle that right now, but that's your goal, okay? Feels very strange, uh, but we can tackle that more in rehearsals and, and all that kind of stuff, okay? So when you play eight on a hand. Make everything look, sound, and feel the same, okay? Whether it's traditional grip or match grip.